people, Broken Puppet, and this is how to draw an old school Grim Reaper. Enjoy. Right people, how to draw an old school Grim Reaper. Now this is going to be done on the iPad Pro in Procreate. I'm going to use four different layers, so I have sketching, colour, shading and line work. As usual, sketching first, then line work, shading and then colour. So go on sketching first. I'm going to go sketching tools, technical pencil, and I'm going to select a dark red. If you're on some paper, I recommend using a normal color pencil because red's a bit hard to rub out. So here we go. I'm going to start off by sketching circle shape, bringing a curved line coming down, curved line coming across, curved line coming down line coming across to a circle. This line I'm going to come down, up by height, line about there. And then I'm going to bring this line through this, so we're going to bring in this bend, like so. And then this curve coming right over the top of that circle. So if you haven't figured it out yet, heads, arms, his weapon, shoulders, body. So I'm going to sketch over the top of this now with like the details. So I'm going to start with doing his hood. So starting off around here, so a bit further across this way, then the centre. I'm going to bend this out, curve this around, and curve this down around here, like so. I'm going to bring this line now coming off the top of this, like come up to a point. Curve off to the back, curve down, bring it backwards, like so. Bring in a curved line, come down in front of that. And I'm going to bring a secondary line, just mimicking that first line we've done there. Coming down to the bottom. And maybe a little line just inside it, just there, a little detail line. Now this side I'm going to have fairly ripped, so we're going to bring this out and just keep making these little jaggedy lines coming backwards until we get to about here we just curve this down into this line like so and from here we're going to bring this curve down line just there create another line just coming off of it to there now where we've got this line here is where the arm's going to be so I'm going to create this teardrop shape going around it and this is basically where his sleeve is. So we're going to create this teardrop shape and then off top of this, going down this way, second line, and then curve line just coming off of that. Just create a line at the bottom, just connecting up to it. A bit similar on this side now, so we're going to bring in this kind of teardrop shape, like so. Curve line coming down, line off of it. This line's going to kind of come out. I'm going to bring this up. Create another line coming off of this. This can curve up around there. Now the bottom bit. Down here. I'm going to make this bit kind of v, sort of V-shape. So I'm going to bring this kind of V-line just here. And I basically want to make these kind of tears kind of fall in shape. So I'm going to keep making these kind of like lines to a point and kind of curve them back. A bit sort of uneven. Just kind of fill in that space at the bottom. Now I'm going to go onto his hands. So I'm going to bring in four lines to create two bones coming out of that sleeve. I'm going to create a little circle. I'm going to do one, two, three, four sausages. And then one, two, three, four sausages in that direction. A little circle bit just there for a thumb. Similar so side now, so we're going to do four lines coming up one, two, three, four to create two bones. Bit of a circle. I'm going to go one sausage, two sausage, three sausage, four sausage, one sausage, two sausage, three sausage, four sausage. A little hint just there as well, and a hint of the thumb just there. So I'm going to bring in these weapon now, so I'm going to bring this line down just here. Make this bit of an angle. Go this one back up, and you basically want the width of this middle part so it's nice and fits just inside the hands. 
not too thin, not too wide. Curve this up here. When we get to the top, two sausage shapes. Make that a little bit wider. I'm just going to tilt this a bit. I'm going to bring this curved line now coming across, like so. So one to that top bit, one to that bottom bit. So you can see the basic shape building up now. It's going to extend that line down a touch from a little bit. Now we're going to do the skull. So to start with, we're going to do nose. Now it's going to be quite far across this side. In about the center, so we're going to bring like a V, uh, well, like an upside down V shape. A little squiggly line just connected it, like so. This outside eye is going to kind of follow that nose shape to begin with, curve up, and it's going to dip in. I want this little dip just there, I like to do. And now let's top up. I'm going to create this curve just off of here. I've got the same kind of height as that bit. Curve down, quite big, I want to kind of fill this space, and back up into that line we've done to begin with. Now here, underneath the nose, and you want to make this kind of curved a little bit, so start going down and start going the other way, just a little curve. Now come up around here, go around that eye shape, and create a curve, coming back up into that hood. Now this jaw, I'm going to make this point out here, and I'm going to bring this wiggly line coming back, like so. Now the end of these teeth, I'm going to bring this out. Curve around. I'm going to create a little curve here and then just this curve line just there. And kind of around the eye. Come from the herds, curving around it just there. Might decrease the size of the eye just a fraction. A little bit bigger than what I want it to be, I think. That's why we'll sketch it out because we always make these adjustments. So that is the basic structure of the Grim Reaper. So I think now I can add some line work in here. So click on line work, black, ink and tool. I'm going to use Studio Pen. It's a bit thick. A bit thin. 26 maybe, yeah. So yeah, I'm just going to go over everything we've done now with the pen. So same as you, like you know, just get your uh, fine pen out and just go over the top. You know, if you want to make any changes, now's the time to do it. Uh, any corrections, if you've done like a line you wasn't quite happy with, you know, just draw it the way you wanted it. You know, you, you haven't got to stick to your sketch, you know, religiously, you know, you can deviate from it. And you ain't got to stick to the way I teach it as well. Now, if you, if you, if you go to a certain point, there's like a really cool line. You're like, oh, I haven't done that, but you know, you think it'd look good if you done that. And just go for it. You know, there's a million different ways of doing this. My way is definitely not the only way. And when you do this as well, don't forget to sort of tag me on social media. I love seeing what you guys do in my tutorials. You know, I try to always comment on them as well. And my social media is, it is me that does it. You know, it's not like some people have like, people. some people use like a bot or you know, that's something they kind of pay for. You know, I do all my social media. So yeah, a little curve line there, just a hint of like this, um, Collarbone just here, I think. And a little hint of the ribs. Nothing crazy. Create a little curve line just there. Yeah, I like that. So I'm going onto the hand now. So four sausages. Curve. Four sausages. Four sausages. Little thumb, bring that curve in there. Uh, 
bring those bones going to put a little tear just in this uh, space for his arm yeah I like that I have to make changes because I don't pre-plan these things, I just draw them as it comes into my head really. Ooh, going over the weapon, don't do that. Not too much line work left. Always try to make sure that your line work connects as well if you're doing it digitally well even if you're not doing it digitally <sighs> annoying line because when we do the next bit um, we put what we call reference on the uh, shading bit and it basically means if it's line to line it will just select within that space so we can shade every bit individually which is a very handy handy tool Not much left now. Turn off the sketching tool. See like it? This line is not connected, so just connect that line. Right, and now let's go on to the shading. So I'm going to select spray paint because I quite like the effect it gives. I'm going to do selection tool right at the top. I have an automatic for now, and a few bits I'll do um, manually as well. So I select that top bit of weapon. So coming diagonally down, I'm going to do a black line through it, a light grey line, and a bit of black just on this corner. Just kind of make it feel a little bit metallic. And then I'm going to start with the hood, so I'm going to freehand draw the space I want to shade in. So I've selected the freehand tool and I've just selected the area. So what it does, it basically means it's only going to shade in the area that I just selected. And so you see it doesn't shade over into the other part of the hood, so you still get that definition. Do that just on a couple of bits, just here and there. It's mainly when I have lines, you know, and I want like a little light just underneath the line. It's down a touch. And what I do is I generally, I don't always, but most of the time I generally go over the edge of the lines. So it kind of feels like, there, yeah, it just feels a bit more organic. You know, rather than just coming to a dead stop, it kind of like blends into it. So it's kind of black down there, coming through that part of the hood. So I'm going to select freehand again. Just quickly, there are a few little bits just here. Don't touch. Okay, I'm going to go automatic. Just show up on this bottom part. Like so. Again, just on this part, the same concept again. I'm just going to freehand select a few little bits. 
Now I know I do this very quick, don't feel like you have to do this as quick as I do. You know, I am well aware that I am much more experienced at this, so this is pretty much like second nature for me. You will get there eventually, but it doesn't matter about speed. You know, speed means nothing. Now I'm going to select this section. I'm going to shade down from the top and as I get lower down it's going to fade it out so the bottom bits are like that. So you get a nice kind of fade just on the bottom. And you can black it out if you want but I prefer it like that. It's just personal preference. Just do this part again. Sorry, my video stopped recording, so I had to go and backtrack a little bit here. So now we're going to do the face. So, going to be saying, I start with the jaw. Not too much, you're going to put a bit of black just underneath that part of the jaw just there. A little bit just on this chin. A little bit just by these teeth. I also done the lines through the teeth there, as you can see. Just so it's got two sets of teeth. I'm going to select the top bit of the skull. Just a few little key areas here. Just a bit on the side bit, just on the cheek. A little hint of it just around the eye. And dip it here, and then just raise that top bit. A bit on this forehead, just up here. And then this little gap part here just behind the eye. And a little bit just there. And then just here on the shoulder, on the uh, collarbone, a little bit of the ribcage, just a tiny bit there. And then just a little tiny bit on the arms. So literally just underneath the hands pretty much. Don't want much more than that there, do me? And lastly, just an easy weapon. Just a bit of it behind the hands. And the top bit just there. And the very last bit of black is just down the center of this part, just there. So now we can go on to color. So go on to your color layer. I'm gonna select my red. And I'm gonna select all the areas on red, so Inside the hood, inside the eyes, inside the sleeve, like so. I'm just going to bulb that in nice and red. And just erase this part here in the bone. So I don't want that. That's because I didn't connect that little corner bit up just there, as you can see. Now if there's a gap, that's what I do, I select in those areas. And lastly, just here behind the jaw, coming down to that spine bit, just there. I'm going to put yellow in the highlighted areas. So down the head part, top and bottom of the weapon. And then his weapon, I'm going to use a nice, like, caramel kind of brownish. And then I'm going to get a darker brown. Go on to my inking tool again. Make this a bit smaller. And I'm just going to whip this up and down. Just to give, like, a wood effect. Nothing too crazy. Like so. And I do believe that will do it for the Grim Reaper. I hope you like it. Comment, like, subscribe. Check out my tutorials. And a broken puppet. And I will see you next time, people. Peace.